so that's what's given to us. So we're being given three vectors. We know the direction of each vector, and we know the magnitude oops, <coughs> of one of the three. And the purpose of the game is to figure out the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B, such that the system is at equilibrium. So in this class, whenever you will be being told that the system is at equilibrium, Equally, oops, brium. It means that if you add mathematically, you can express that word as the sum of all the forces given to us must be equal to the zero vector. Again, we have to be careful not to forget our vector on the right hand side because if we add vectors on the left hand side, we must obtain a vector on the right hand side. So we must be careful not to put zero scatter. So since we can project all our vectors into the x component and the y component, this condition for equilibrium becomes that really the sum of all the forces in the x component is equal to zero. And similarly, the sum of all the y component of the forces is also equal to zero. Both conditions is satisfied or are satisfied. If you were dealing with vectors in three dimension, then you will have some of the forces in the z component. Okay? So, all we need to do is express all our vector in component notation. Once we have them in component notation, we know that we can add them up easily. We're just going to add up all the i's together, all the j's together, and set them up to 0 times i plus 0 times j. So, that's the idea. So, let's express all our vectors in component notation. Let's start with the easiest one, C, which is given to us entirely. So we need to identify the right triangle for C. We notice that the angle that defines vector C is the angle between the vector itself and the y-axis. Therefore, I'm going to recognize my right angle triangle right here. Then I'm going to draw those little vectors specifically so I don't goof on the direction. This will be my CY and this will be my CX. So now I can see clearly that my CX is going to be the opposite and therefore I need to use the sine. So it will be 2 times sine 30. But my CX is going left while my positive X is going right. Therefore I need to add the negative sign. And then in the J component, if the X component is sine, Obviously, the J component is cosine. I don't have to think about it. Directly to cosine 30. And again, I have to check the direction. CY is going down. My positive Y is up. Therefore, negative. And I'm going to do the same thing with B and A. The only difference with B and A is, since I don't know the magnitude, I'm just going to put a variable to represent, to represent the magnitude. So for A, I'm going to use A. Let's decompose A. I'm, I'm given the angle between A and the positive x-axis. Therefore, I obviously will want to consider this right angle triangle, which means that I'm going to decompose my vector A as AX going right and AY going up. Therefore, I expect both components AX and AY to be positive. So the X is just going to be cosine, A cosine of 45, and a cosine, uh, a sine of 45. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for B. The angle of B is defined between the minus x, therefore I want to pick this right angle triangle. And I will decompose my vector B as Bx going left, By going up, so I know right away that my bx would expect a negative sign and my by will be positive. So I can put my negative sign, negative, positive. In this case, my bx is the adjacent of the angle, therefore b cosine of 30. And then the other one is sine. Okay, now I'm set. Now all I have to do is satisfy 
my condition for equilibrium. So this condition for equilibrium is telling me that if I add all the x components together, I will end up with 0 times i. And as I add all the j components together, I'm going to end up with 0 times j. Therefore, if I satisfy equation 2 with what I have, I only need to add all the i's component together. Therefore, I have a cosine 45, which is square root of 2 over 2, minus b cosine 30. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Sine 30 is 1 half, so minus 1. And this must be equal to 0. And what I've done here is I have already skipped a step, because technically all this is i, and my 0 vector is 0 times i. But since I've won the scalar equation, I've skipped that step. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing, satisfy equation 3, which means that I'm going to add all the j component together. So my second equation will be a sine of 45, which is square root of 2 over 2, plus b sine of 30. Sine of 30 is 1 half, plus b divided by 2, minus 2 cosine 30. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2, times minus 2, minus square root of 3. And this is equal to 0. Or again, all those were the j component. This is equal to the 0 vector, which was 0j. So now I'm facing with a system of two equations to unknown. a square root of 2 over 2. Let's multiply everything by 2. Minus square root of 3 b is equal to 2. Where I move my minus 1 on the other side, multiply by 2. And the other equation will be square root of 2 times a plus b is equal to 2 square root of 3. And now you decide. So you've seen some example on the mathematical physics page where you could use uh, Gauss's method if you want to. If it's a 2 by 2, it should, be, uh, it should be straightforward and you can either use the addition method or the substitution method. In this case, I realize that I have the same factor for a, therefore I'm going to use the substitution method, uh, the addition method. So I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to minus the second equation such that a will disappear and I will be left over with the only b, which I can solve easily. Once I got b, I can re substitute it either in equation 4 and 5 and I can get a. So if I take 4 minus 5 and end up with minus square root of 3b minus b again is equal to 2 minus 2 square root of 3. And now I can solve for b. So b will be equal to 2 square root of 3 minus 2 divided by 1 plus square root of 3 where I, I have flipped the signs. Now that you know b, then you can either, you pick, either you substitute it back in equation 5 and you get a, or you substitute it back in equation 4 and you get a. So usually you pick the easiest one to make the algebra simpler. So I'm going to pick equation 4. So I end up with a square root of 2 minus square root of 3 times what I've just obtained, b which is 2 square root of 3 minus 2 divided by 1 plus square root of 3 and this must be equal to 2 therefore I can solve for a Woo. and I need a little more space so I'm gonna do it here a will be 2 plus this whole term square root of 3 times 2 square root of 3 minus 2 divided by 1 plus square root of 3 and I'm going to divide the whole thing by square root of 2 this will give me the magnitude of A and this will give me the magnitude of B now once we reach that step you should always check your answer that is remember that we know the direction of all our vectors that is, as we express them in component notation, we know that a and b better be positive because we have put the right 
direction with any appropriate negative sign. So as you solve for your system, you have to obtain a positive number for B and you have to obtain a positive number for A. Because A and B, in those cases, represents the length of our vector. And there is no such a thing as a negative length. So always make sure that whenever you plug numbers, you indeed have positive numbers. If you don't have positive numbers, you know something went wrong. Okay? So whenever you know 100% every direction of every of your vector, and you end up using the equilibrium uh, condition and solving for a system of two equations to unknown, or three equations to unknown, or four equations for unknown, you know that you should always expect positive values for your magnitude because those magnitudes physically represent either the magnitude of a force or the magnitude of a velocity or the magnitude of an acceleration or the magnitude of a vector. And the magnitude of a vector is the length of vector, which has to be positive. So always expect a positive number. There will be some cases later on in this class, and especially in C270, you where you will not know the direction. And therefore, when you express your vectors in computation, really, it could be plus or minus. You will not know the answer to that as you start. Therefore, the direction might be wrong. That's the only case where you might expect a negative magnitude as you solve for the scalar equation. But otherwise, if you always know the direction for sure as you start the problem, you have to get positive answer.